Well, I bid you welcome, welcome. We'll hang it thrice welcome to another very exciting episode. They're all exciting, but this one's particularly exciting because I have in the Good Listening to Show Clearing a lovely actor called Gerard Cook, who, um, if you're watching the film version of this, we are straddling a multimedia platform here. We're recording the podcast and the show version uh, for Zoom and on Zoom, and we get the film version for Vimeo. You'll see that he's sort of half man, half Viking, going back to the half man bit. He's half man, half just pirate. He's just a real awesome pants and a very versatile, lovely actor. So Gerard Cook, I bid you, as I say, thrice welcome. Well, thank you very much. What a welcome indeed. It's very, yes. very nice to be here. Also, you're a lovely man in that you've become a co-administrator on the hashtag LOL virus sort of comic Facebook group that I'm curating with the lovely you alongside me. Thank you. That's an utter joy. You, you've you certainly brought, as intended, brought a lot of laughter to a lot of people through a, a challenging time. Bless you. So it got going. Uh, it was just me going, oh, I've had an idea about a year and a bit ago, lockdown part one. Now we've got long, lockdown part three and it's personal, whatever. But there's about 1500 people lolling along on the daily with Stan Laurel as our mascot. But I didn't bring you into the Good Listening To Show team just so I could talk about hashtag lol virus. I'm delighted to have you here. You're a part of the fabric of Bristol, if I may say. You do a lot of work for Show of Strength, I know. Uh, you're also at Ashton Court, seen outdoors quite a lot. There's something at home with it. Is it the Smythes or the Smiths? The, it's, it's, it's with a Y, but it's pronounced, the, it pronounced Smith. Yes. Um, the, the, um, the resident family that were at Ashton Court Festival for multiple generations. That's the Show of Strength project as well, actually. Yes, so there's Sheila Hannon we have in common as a, a, another friend on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You've been, in, in all the time I've been in Bristol, I've had a real awareness of you and we bump into each other every now and again. And over time, it's it's just been a, an ongoing pleasure to to sort of warm up our, our friendship, which is really lovely to have you here. You're also doing the Treasure Island Story Walk with ah. Angie, Angie Belcher, which I think is an awesome name. So the double act, that's going to keep on giving is Cook and Belcher, or you might decide Belcher and Cook. I don't know. But anyway. Cook and Belcher, Belcher and Cook. Well, I, I call myself Captain Cuttlefish when I'm doing the story walk. <laughs> and I love, but it's it's everything you might want in a wonderful, you are, and people need to give you a good looking at as well, because you are, as a genuine compliment, a very versatile looking actor in that you're, um, if you're pardon this expression, you've got a really good period face for, for acting, I think. <laughs> <clears throat> Moving on. So I am going to, in a moment, ask you, how's morale and how's your story of the day? In fact, why don't we do that now? How is morale and how's the story of your day so far? Morale is good. Morale is good. It's been, and nobody needs telling this, a challenging year. But right now, things are good. And I feel like my mojo is in a good place. You've come to the right place. I often call myself a bit of a mojo coach. So I thank you for using that word. You didn't know that I was, we were going to up and down like a yo-yo with a mojo there. So it's in full flow flow. Thank you. So we're going to riff on the wonderful spontaneity of taking you through the storytelling metaphors here in the Good Listening To Show Clearing. Uh, just to explain, if you don't already know where you've been, not you, but the audience, but this is the show that brings you the clearing where all good questions come to be asked and all good stories come to be told. And then we're going to bounce you along. It's all to play for, Gerard Cook. But there's the clearing. There's a tree. We shake your tree. Some storytelling apples come out. There's alchemy, gold, bit of Shakespeare, and then boom, you even get a cake at the end of it. Delish. Lovely jubbly. So let's get cracking then. So what is a clearing like for you, Gerard Cook? OK, so I've been tossing up two ideas, so I'll throw them both at you. So one is is the sea. Um, and I think ideally the sea being somewhere warm and Mediterranean, but anywhere really being immersed in the sea is very, very grounding. And actually, uh, I feel better near any body of water as well. Walking by a lake, walking by Bristol docks, I feel more myself. It's a very kind of elemental thing. And the other is if I'm just stuck in the middle of a big DIY project, because I'm absolutely single focused and everything else is, is peripheral. So both then. present then as sort of Zen-like potential states for you, the Zen-like immersion in DIY. And by the mm. way, I respect you for that because I'm what's called a DIY turnip. I have no idea. 
Um, you know, we can't all be good at everything, people. I I'm famous for borrowing a laser sort of, well, it it's to show that where to put the screws in. So everything's straight and they were still higgity piggity and the whole set of cupboards I put up fell off the wall, please. Brilliant. Thanks. Anyway, sorry, this isn't about me. Back to you. So the choice is yours. Would you like me to arrive with a tree in your clearing whilst just flapping about in the Mediterranean in immersion? Yeah. Yeah. Or, which which I think may be more tranquil than me just arriving within your DIY project, but that that's don't let me steer you. Where would you prefer? Oh goodness, let's go for that that Mediterranean Sea. Let's go for that. And I'm thinking desert island now with that solitary palm tree that you get in a lot of uh, cartoons about desert islands. Uh, yeah. We may or may not have landed on a landscape. So would you like me to appear with my tree swimming alongside you, or would you like me to have gone? and plonked it into, a, into some sand where you can have a little rest. Swimming alongside you as a sort of flotation device. I think that would work. Wow. By the way, there's great uh, what's called resonance today, because the last person I spoke to was the first person ever to talk about a flotation tank. So the fact <laughs> where you're the second one on the trot, Just in the so zone. You're, in, you're in good company. That was a, mm. a theatre practitioner who you may know of called Phelan McDermott. So you're, um, you're next into a flotation zone. So here I am now going, <laughs> trying to keep up with you with my tree. And it's a bit waiting for Godot in that it's a tree. Uh, it's, it's sort of existential. So now we're in your clearing. Uh, we're going to shake your tree to see which storytelling apples metaphorically fall out. And this is where you've had five minutes or as long as you've needed before we speak, uh, Gerard Cook, uh, to have thought about four things that have shaped you, three things that inspire you, Two things that never fail to grab your attention, which I like to call oh, squirrels, you know, whatever's going to just distract you. Um, that's borrowed from the film up in case listeners don't have that reference. And then finally, a quirky or unusual fact about you we couldn't possibly know until you tell us. Now, that's a lot of information, but it's open to you to crunch on those apples as you see fit. And don't matter about it doesn't matter if there's any overlap between, you know, various passions that might emerge over to you to shake your tree. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know how literal you want this thing. I'm a literal minded man. You're a consummate actor. You're shaking the tree. So <laughs> da -donk, donk, da donk, donk, and then crunch on the apple of choice, please. What would you like to tell us about first? OK, let's um, let's go for four things that have shaped you or moi. Um, I realise that this is immediately a very, it, well, I suppose it can be as personal as you like in a way, but the, I suppose, as anybody, what shapes you is your upbringing, your childhood and your experiences there. Um, I had uh, two amazing, loving, supportive parents. Uh, I still do. They're, they're still around. Um, my, my dad's in, in, in poor health with, with Alzheimer's, but they're still here and I'm very, very grateful for every moment that I have. Um, they gave me, I say, um, a grounding in um, sort of the, what, what feels important, which is sort of love and acceptance of others and a sense of social justice as well. Um, and that links into number two in a way, um, because it was part of that upbringing, was that I was raised Catholic, very, very religious family. And while that while my spirituality has evolved through my life. Um, so I don't necessarily identify with that so strongly. Um, I have retained that connection to a belief in higher force and those core beliefs in love, forgiveness, etc. cetera. Um, and broadly speaking, obviously the, joy, the joys and the pains that one has in life, um, influence who you are in terms of the things that shape you um and i consider myself to be a, a late developer in many ways in in life experience and wisdom um and getting over sort of my fatal flaw has always been a little bit of uh, too much naivety um but i think it's true that the the tougher experiences are the ones that shape you the most um, and you become a better and a stronger person as a result. And actually, as an actor, those are the things that shape what you bring to, to the part and to the storytelling, etc. cetera. Um, and more recently, in the last few years, um, my amazing partner, Thea, 
um, we came together after one of the toughest periods of my life. But for me, it's a blessing to be with someone who brings out the best in, in me. And I feel, you know, we bring out the best in each other um, and we have strength to balance each other out. Um, and it kind of feels that we're infinitely stronger as a unit together because of that. That's sort of four. That's lovely. I love the amplification of Thea in there as well. And also the, the obviously the, the great sort of gratitude one owes to one's upbringing and parents as well. And sorry to hear that your father is experiencing or in that sort of end zone of, of, of Alzheimer's. As you know, this is partly also on UK Health Radio. So, you know, if you, know, you want to talk about that, uh, you, you're very welcome to or, or not necessarily it's just um yeah, you, i'm very happy very open you're positioning yeah. it in, in, a, in a very sort of welcoming and inclusive space for that as well mm. wonderful um very deftly and succinctly put um what about three things that inspire you um this one was kind of felt, felt a little bit, bit more broad uh for me um or, or how does it be specific uh, I'm in awe of anyone who is able to multitask because uh, I, I can't. Uh, that sort of plate spinning, as soon as I've got a couple more, more than one thing on the go, then that's when stress and potentially anxiety can kick in and that sort of thing. And going back to the health side of things, I'm very aware it's that DIY thing of in the zone, that's my, that's my strength. The minute there's more than one thing going on, yeah, the way other people do it and do it so deftly. Again, back to my partner, she's a she's a winner at that. So big picture her, small picture me, we're, we're all, we're, we're covered. We cover yes. all bases. And is she good at DIY as well? So she's just a better human being. So. <laughs> <laughs> infinitely, infinitely. <laughs> the DIY projects are left for me. Yeah. Project management is, is kind of her department. Yes, like that. Um, and generally, in terms of things or people that inspire you is anyone at the top of their game really i think particularly anyone from the british acting scene um i think you and i share a keen passion for all things star trek and uh, patrick <laughs> patrick stewart is yes. is kind of my honorary dad as well in a yes. way uh he's 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 an absolute boss yes there and... happened there happened to have been a lot of star trek themed memes that are coming into the hashtag law virus group Partly, i think there is that actor's instinct of patrick stewart you know his he probably i don't know he may regard his jean-luc picard period as being uh, you know slightly chewing gumming for him or maybe it isn't because he's obviously renowned for being a classical actor and i talked about waiting for godot earlier on one of the best productions of that i've seen was with patrick stewart and ian I saw mckellen it, so it saw it in bath yes yeah yeah Israel bath. fantastic um, that was yes. that was a that was a special moment. It was the only time, the one and only time I ever stood at at stage door. Ah. Um, and it was a time where because I, I I haven't been to drama school. Um, I, I went straight from university straight into uh, into acting and career. I did try for drama school at one point, and it was my my audition was the day after, watch it after seeing Waiting for Godot, and um, and I stood at stage door, and uh, it was. Uh, Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen, Simon Callow, Ronald Pickup, and um, Simon Callow's just lounging by the door, looking, acting all suave. Ian His McKellen. was the first ever acting book I ever read, the Simon Callow one. I think it's called Being an Actor, isn't Being it? A, oh, yeah, oh, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, Ian McKellen's rather harassed by all the crowd going around him. He can't quite get through and somebody at the back shouts, you shall not pass. <laughs> Very witty. Um, <laughs> and Patrick Stewart comes out and as I'm getting his autograph, I say, I've got, I've got this audition tomorrow. I said, good luck. And I just felt like I had a blessing from the Pope. It was, it was. Wonderful. I love that. Also, the, the most recent meme that made me howl slightly in a well, it was a bit too long for the joke that it was, but it was a picture of Jean Luc Picard, Patrick Stewart, in front of a singer sewing machine, as if he's all about the catchphrase. <laughs> Here it comes. Make it so. <laughs> Thank you for going to that. To steal your thunder. Yeah. No, no, no. I want. I'm, I love the reciprocity, and that's exactly what I was teeing up for. A lot of people didn't get it, and I was thinking. Oh, Hello. come on. Come on, get, get with, with the programme. Get, get with the 80s programme. Exactly. Yes. And who are your favourite actors, apart from that ensemble? Who else do you really admire out in the world of... Oh, goodness and... me. Um, as I say, uh, finding that inspiration from 
from those successful British actors. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very into kind of the period fantasy genre. And that's, as you pointed out, trying to pitch my look towards that field. Yes. So anyone in, in those those sorts of and By um, the way, talking of, of how your, your look and the realm in which you fit, I saw your short film to Avalon recently. Uh, so there is a there's definitely a you know a historical genre to your look and capability i think you really suit um that sort of as i said at the beginning half man half mike half viking if you're more than one man you could be a robin hood as well it's all it's all going on yeah well it's 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 kind of deliberate you know th there's very much a, a zeitgeist there in terms of that that work that's being created at the moment and and you know, i really really have a passion for that for that kind of storytelling so you laughed so, in the face of lockdown hair, I'm assuming you just let it just go feral because it's going to make you look look better. Well, it has been for, for years pr prior to that anyway, so it didn't make a lot of difference for me. <laughs> this idea of people going, I can't wait to get a haircut. I, no, it doesn't. Doesn't work for me. People on the video, they can't see this, by the way. It's, it's, it's all tied up at the back, but there we go. It, it is very, very Viking-esque, by the way. I did really enjoy that mini series of, of about what's well, called Viking, which is really good. Uh, I know you weren't in it, and I'm sorry you weren't. <laughs> There's a spit. They're doing Vikings Valhalla coming up, so you never know. Get in there. Also, we, in terms of um, resonances of, of, of shared experience, we used to have uh, an agent called Janet Welsh in common, who's now yes, re retired. Did. And mm -hmm. now you, I was delighted to see in researching you for today that you've now successfully started riding a new horse, shall we say? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. All going well there too. At the very end, by the way, I'll invite you to go as deep as you like on your URLs, sir, as well. And I know Thank that you. your known Gerard Cook is the actor, but your real name is Anthony Gerard Cook. That's correct. I love that. So, so it's just nice that one knows that one has an actor's name. I'm Chris Grimes, obviously, in my acting name. I've got a middle name, which is slightly sort of comic, which is I'm Christopher Allen Linden Grimes. Don't know what that was about. I thought for a while, way back when, of becoming um, an actor called Christopher Linden. But then I realised that that sounded rather than grotty and Dickensian, which is what I'm going for. Um, if you don't mind this expression, I thought I sounded a bit like a sort of tap dancing pomps if I was to do Christopher Linden. And I'm not very good at tap dancing, shall we say. <laughs> anyway, go figure. Let's get back to the canopy of your tree, which is slightly soggy, because as we know, we're swimming in the Mediterranean with me trying to keep up with you and you trying to keep up with me. Um, we're going, we're still in the sort of what inspired you phase, I think. We've got. Actors. Yeah, so it's so number three, really. Uh, it's more of a thing. But a vague concept and it links with what we've just been talking about really is it's it's a good narrative and a compelling drama um and it inspires me because i want to be i want to be there yeah. you know that you know when when you see when you're in you're in when you're in a stage when you see a stage show or you just see a really great tv or film uh, tv program or film and you just want i want to be there i want to be doing that yes your That's... soul time is still there so i know that the bleakness of the pandemic for actors was pretty you know stressful as you said and challenging mm. But it's so lovely that you're still here, still swimming in the right way, as we not just the analogy of where in the Mediterranean, but your soul is still still chiming and pulling you towards the sort of theatre clearing, if you like. Yeah, yeah, I'm more, more so than ever, and I'm I'm glad you saw that. Yeah, um, to Avalon short film that was something that we made between lockdowns in September, sort of Arthurian set short film. Yes, yeah, so um, yeah. It was great. It was great to to collaborate with some with some friends and to and to work together on that. My first avenue into sort of um, co production as well. Yes, very good. Okay, now we're on to two things that never fail to grab your attention in the hawk squirrels at land. Well, so you say squirrels. I mean, nature in in all its glory and variety, which sounds hugely pretentious, but you know, but. Maybe no, it's, it's that kind answer. of show. I don't know, um, but, but I mean, it, it could it could be anything. I mean, it, I was mulling these questions over my head, and, and my my cat rolled on its back and was begging for its belly to be rubbed, and I can't walk past that. I just can't. It's just you, cat or a dog, belly rubs got to be done. Nothing else exists, and whether it's whether it's that or whether it's the sea, or whether it's that stunning view, you know, it's just jaw dropping heart melting moment absolutely i love that sense of presence that you obviously have in being attuned to where you are location wise but also what's in front of you as you say there's a cat there going i need my tummy stroked um gerard <laughs> cook is the man <laughs> love um and number two which kind of links back to my other clutter-free space in a way tool shops 
<laughs> get me a, get me in a tool shop and I'm like a kid in the sweet shop. It's just sort of all the pretty colors and all the all and it kind of gets the mind ticking over on all the projects you could do, all the things you could build. Yeah. Whereas for me, that's escape of bewilderment. But for you, it's, <laughs> if, we, if we lose you, you've gone to screw fix is what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so do you have an impressive tool shed, if you'll pardon the expression of that question? Um, I've got I've got some I've got some, you know, I've, I've collected over the years. And then that's the other thing, I suppose, going back to things that shape you as well is uh sort of male the male role models that i have my dad and my granddad and then they were never kind of the, the man's man talk about football and drinking but what they were were, were hands-on people yes so my dad was a my dad was a book binder and my granddad was an electrician and a washing machine repairman and then that sort of if it you know make do and mend and 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 fix and fix it and fix her uppers and, and all that sort of stuff and just sort of get your hands involved and anything will do and my granddad was a little bit heath robinson in his approach yeah. but you know it was yes so that in terms of a sense of identity and masculinity and and and, and all of that sort of stuff it's very much tied up t- tied up with with that and getting your hands stuck in and there's something lovely about the quality of usefulness that you have in being able to be quite artisan. So <laughs> come the end of the zombie apocalypse, rather than just being an actor in residence, I can do some speeches <laughs> for you. You can actually build some cool stuff. So I like that. Well, and, hopefully, hopefully. I mean, it's, it feels very small for I because at the same time, I'm, I'm in awe of people who can do so much bigger and better things than I could possibly do. But Yes. And as you're good at DIY and I'm so crap at it, I'm already thinking, oh, I wonder if he does tree lopping, because <laughs> that's something <laughs> we've got on our plate at the moment. <laughs> I'm sort of kidding, but I'm not really. Do- I'm, I am kidding completely. OK, we'll, so we'll talk later. <laughs> <laughs> We'll take this offline, listeners, and see if I can get mm. my tree lopped by Gerard Cook. Back in the clearing, this is the Good Listening To show with Gerard Cook and me, Chris Grimes. And, and now, one quirky or unusual fact about you we couldn't possibly know until you tell us. I got stuck on this one. I did. Because I, I wear my quirkiness on my sleeve. So, it's although there's going to be an awful lot of listeners that don't know me, um, but I, th- there's nothing in terms of a quirky little thing I don't talk about if you see what I mean um but uh I love cooking like that and and that and and actually over lockdown that's that sort of again it's one of those things that's really come into its own particularly when the restaurants and the you know even the takeaways were shut at the, at the beginning you sort of you go well what can we do instead so I've been making my own pizza bases we've been putting swish tapas together um I do a mean lasagna so I was yeah. going to say, what's your sig dish, Gerard Cook? Uh, well, it could, yeah, I suppose, yeah, a veggie lasagna, um, uh, seafood tapas. Um, so are anything. you vegetarian, but you eat seafood? That's it, kind of a pesky pescatarian, yes. Pesky pescatarian. Lovely. There is that thing of how do you know somebody's a vegetarian? They'll tell you. Um, so, yeah, kind of it's that. a darker thing. version of that, which is more, I've heard that pertaining to veganism. And yes. I'm, I mean, no disservice to anyone who is a vegan, but there is that joke of, how do you know? There's one at the door, they'll tell you. Aha, aha. Aha. So if you are offended, do just write and complain to chris at secondcurve.uk. That's the email to get in touch about the programme. Wonderful. And of course, I've just now realised with Gerard Cook, in your DNA, it makes sense that, of course, you would, oh, see what I'm doing here, the clues in the title. With the cook. Cook, the, with the C word, yeah. Yes, uh, uh, the most tasty C word, cook. I love that. Uh, wonderful. So um, I believe we've shaken your tree. Would you agree? You, you have certainly shaken my tree. My, my tree had a damn good shaking from you. Thank you. You're very welcome. So now we stay in the clearing, which again, I keep reminding myself it's a, <laughs> it's a soggy clearing. But now we're going to stay in your clearing and um, we're going to talk about alchemy and gold now. Mm. So when you are at purpose and in flow, Gerard Cook, what do you most like to bring, you know, when are you at your happiest? Um, when my mojo is in full flow flow. <laughs> yes. Um, I suppose that, I mean, it's, it's, it's riffing on themes of what we've already talked about, but it's very much when acting, when on stage, when in the rehearsal room, when, in, when on set. That's very much when you're yeah, absolutely in flow, in the zone absolutely feeling that this is what you are supposed to be doing yeah absolutely lovely and um now i'm going to award you with a cake 
uh, for gracing us with your presence via a bit of Shakespeare. Um, the Shakespeare is inspired by all the worlds of stage and all the men and women merely players. So it's a deliberate uh, invitation to get a bit existential on your ears by mm. asking you about legacy and how you'd most like to be remembered. Um, that's the sort of final, final cherry, but you can get there and it's a, it's a deliberate multi-layered cake by design. I'd like to hear about any favorite inspirational quotes or piece of, of advice that have always pulled you towards your future. What notes, help or advice might you proffer to a younger version of yourself? And then, as I say, we can park up with um, legacy and how you'd most like to be remembered. So over to you to interpret your cake, please. The cherry on the cake. Thank you. Um, have, you have you ever put, put together a vision board where you sort of just get together loads of clips, clippings from magazines and all that sort of thing and splatter them? And this is your this is where you're you're shooting from. By, I, I won't go into the it, it, it's a it can be a very personal thing and you know it's about your what that personal vision is so I won't go into to detail about everything that's there but there is one quote that was just cut out of a magazine and it's top left and I say it every day as I walk down the stairs and it's stay positive stay passionate stay focused keep going um I love that just say and it, it, I it just it. just say it again because it's just really lovely sometimes to reincorporate really good mantras like that Stay positive, stay passionate, stay focused, keep going. And by the way, the keep going, I so relate to because of my way of navigating through the pandemic, actually, which was actually remembering a quote from from Dory and Finding Nemo, which is just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. So keep going. Yeah. And what else do you need, really? I think, and of course, you know, to tell you, to tell you younger self, I think that that would be a big one but also i think to to make the most of now i think um uh, a little reminder that time slips away quicker than you than you think it might and i'm someone who likes to settle in the moment and immerse myself in the moment and just be, which is lovely, which is, you know, which is important to do as well. But at the same time, making sure you know what's what you're doing next as well. And that's sort of the little nudge I'd have liked to give my, my younger self. And that sounds to me like a, a reminder to keep calm and slow one's, I suppose, engine rate or heart rhythm down just to experience it as you're still keeping going. But do it calm. Yes. Yeah, and that and that duality, which I think you know, that's a balancing act, which I think um, a lot of people will will struggle with one way or another. Absolutely wonderful, um, delicious stuff. And now um, let's go to Shakespeare, and you don't have to start spouting Shakespeare at me, but you're very welcome to. But um, what would you like when all is said and done, your legacy to be? How would you most like to be remembered? Yeah. And this ties into when we were talking about it, uh, there was something about um, what are you here to reveal to the world as well? And I, I think this is kind of ties in with legacy as well. Um, and then it feels pretentious as hell, but hey, um, in terms of revealing to the world, I would hope truth. Um, it, and whether that's truth in performance or honesty in my relationships, or the courage to speak truth to power in the face of injustice, which is a big thing and something which, you know, I don't do half as much as, I, as I'm in awe of people who really do, mm -hmm. um, really show that that courage. But I think that that would be something in terms of uh, what you feel you should be here in the world to do. That feels important. And in terms of a legacy, I suppose that that you've made some positive impact in the world you, 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 for, for, for people, for individuals or for a bigger picture. As you know, Chris, I do a lot of stuff sort of campaigning with equity. So that's yes. um, that's a big side of things as well. Um, and and in, terms of being, in terms of being remembered, I suppose, kind of slightly take, the, take uh, a slightly softer approach is just being remembered for being kind and talented, I suppose. Lovely stuff. Indeed. 
And yes, to talk about your social justice for a moment as well, and, and thank you for that lovely cake interpretation. Indeed, you are the, the local regional, I don't know quite what your full title is, but I know that I look to you as being sort of the equity rep locally. Um, that, that could be doing you a disservice. What's the full title that you bring? Uh, so at the moment, I'm, I'm the secretary of the Equity Bristol and West General Branch. And I have noticed that you've really held the flag firm during various uh, choppy uh, political instances that have happened, you know, in the last several years. But of course, it's been particularly tricky during this last year. As we all know, theatres went dark, the audiences mm. went home, and of course, so did all theatre companies. So it's been a very choppy time, as you said at the very beginning, and a very challenging time. Yeah, it has. And I, I think that, you know, the, the unions um, held firm on a lot of things and has been there for it's really it's it's been an absolutely essential thing for for many many people mm. um over this last 12 months and this is your moment in the sunshine so uh, is there a, there's more to talk about and is there anything else you think you'd like to say as you've got your moment here in the good listening to clearing there's nothing that comes to mind but then as we discuss there's probably going to be something that springs up like a jack-in-a-box so and if I may, that there's been um, there's an opportunity now for me to uh, because we have still got some time left offered to us by the the oxygenation of how long the program is. Um, I have been promising over the last several episodes to reveal the story behind the story of something called Diamonds Beneath Your Feet, which I often talk about uh, when I'm talking about alchemy and gold. And I say and the diamonds beneath our feet. So if you don't mind me, I'm just going to tell the story, which will just allow me to tell the listeners what the final reveal is of that. Oh, and it's nice. lovely. A apocryphal story about, um, as I heard it wrapped, a South African drought farmer. And just to be clear, he's not farming drought, but everything is dying around him. His cattle are dying, his crops are dying, and it's just a sort of sun scorched uh, scape. And meanwhile, every day he's opening up his newspaper and starting to feel slightly bitter and twisted because the um, the grass is always greener in the sense that many other people throughout the rest of South Africa, apocryphally, are prospecting, a bit like the Californian gold rush, prospecting for diamonds and finding them. So he thinks, right, I'm off, sells up his farmstead, off he goes tragically into the wilderness. But um, almost the first week of who he sold the farm to, they walk along and a guy finds a rock on the ground and he puts it on the mantelpiece. And about a week later, somebody comes to visit and says, good grief, let me look at that. That's the biggest diamond I've ever seen. And so they started digging. And of course, the poor farmer, the tragedy of the story is the farmer's gone. But they start digging beneath our feet and it becomes apocryphally the biggest diamond mine in South Africa. So it's this idea that that, you know, in any creative endeavor, if we arrive at a particular age and I'm 58, I'm just going to swap ages with you. How old are you, Jared? I, I know I'm older. 39. Than Bless you for that we slip of a thing um but by the time you've come this far in your career and what's really striking about you is your sense of centeredness about being in the right place at the right time your passion is still chiming within this domain despite the adversity and the quiet of the last year even though you've been very creative i, I get that uh, it's just a reminder a sort of remember to remember everyone you haven't been barking up the wrong tree oftentimes if you keep digging the diamonds are beneath your feet mm -hmm. So absolutely. Know, how do you like them apples? That's the sort of I like I like I like them apples. I like those diamonds in the rough. Yes, and diamonds beneath our feet, diamonds in the rough. And indeed you are a diamond in the rough. Bless ah, you. Bless you. So what are current projects? What are you currently working on, Gerard Cook? So the big ones coming up are with Show of Strength, the Treasure Island Story Walk, which you mentioned at the start. So that runs the half term holiday. So that is uh he looks at the diary. By the way, Should dates may those... get lost in the ether because the timeline of UK Health Radio might put us about six weeks hence, in which case you could be about to tell us something that's already finished. That's already been and gone. Well, it will be available for private bookings. I like the cut <laughs> of your jib there. There um, you go. So the Treasure Island Story Walk runs from uh, the, the half term week running from May 29th onwards on, on Bristol docks. And um, there's also the grown up version, which is Blood, Blackbeard and Buccaneers. Which like is the alliteration uh, blood, blackbeard, and buccaneers. Buccaneers. Yeah. Um, which uh so Blackbeard, Bristol's most famous son, potentially, him and Cary Grant. Yeah. Um uh 
originally from Bristol, probably from Redcliffe, died 300 years ago, just over. Yeah, uh, it was his 300 300th anniversary in 2017. Um, Go you, you actor with who's done some research. I like that. <laughs> done, done that. Well, we 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 timed we timed it to slot it in. I've, I feel like I've got that date wrong now. I think it was probably 2019, and, and we haven't been doing the show. You can for make long. stuff up. I anyway, uh, just say whatever. Yeah. Um, and he he uh, yeah, 300 years since his anniversary, and there's all sorts of revelations about uh, about Blackbeard um, on that walking tour. You can come along and, and you can find out. For instance, did you know that Blackbeard's grandfather was a Gloucestershire vicar, Ooh. vicar of Stonehouse? There you go. Little Who is no doubt back in that historical day slightly disappointed in his son for being a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, yeah, his, his grandson was Blackbeard. So, or he uh, might have actually vicariously enjoyed it, thinking, oh, I, did, I wish I'd been a pirate. Mm. Um, and then we've got a, a mansion through time at home with the Smiths at Ashton Court Festival. Um, that's coming up in a few weeks' time. Uh, there are plans afoot, and I can't say too much, but um, last, uh, no, not last, because it was the summer that wasn't, the summer before 2019, uh, Moby Dick on a ship. This was a production of Moby Dick in Promenade at SS Great Britain. To, Moby um, Dick on a ship. I love that. I'll, yes. I'll um, that through with a bit of brochure uh, copy right there. Uh, Dark Stuff Productions in association, with, in association with Tobacco Factory Theatres. There are plans afoot to, to develop that show further, but watch this space. Um, and I think that's all that's coming up. But, you know. Bless you. Eternal actor available for hire. Jamesy available. So, so would you like to go deep and hard on your URLs, uh, Gerard Cook? I'll call you Sir Gerard Cook, because of course the knighthood isn't too far away, obviously. Yes, absolutely. So the best place to find everything from me is gerardcook.com. That's G-E-R-A-R-D-C-O-O-K-E dot -E com. That's my website, and from there you can link to my Facebook, my Instagram, my Twitter, my YouTube, my IMDb, and my Spotlight. Um, but if you search Gerard Cook actor, then I'll probably come up in, in some shape or form. Lovely, and To Avalon was a lovely short film that I saw. Your showreels actually got that as part of it within your website. I was looking at that earlier on today. Thank you. Wonderful. So we have been listening to the lovely, versatile Bristol based actor Gerard Cook here in the Good Listening To show and clearing. I'll just say goodbye to you now, Gerard, and then I'll do a quick outro for the audience. Um, and then remember that one can, after you've listened to the show on UK Health Radio, Gerard Cook's episode will also then be pulled into the Good Listening To podcast, which is based or so hosted rather on Buzzsprout. So uh, you have been listening to Gerard Cook. And just one other thing, I, I wish your father all the very best. I appreciate he is in a, a difficult place at this time. Thank it's you. Warm, and how old is your dad currently? Uh, my dad, he was four, 1941 he was born. So it, he, he's, he's coming up to his 80th in next week. There Happy you go. Your father. And so uh, thank you so much for um, uh, gracing us with your presence here in the Good Listening To show uh, clearing. This has been Gerard Cook. I've been Chris Grimes. Good night. <laughs>